Alright friends, in this question we are given a uniform metal plate shaped like a triangle ABC has mass 540 gram. The length of the sides AB, BC and CA are 3 cm, 5 cm and 4 cm respectively. Okay. The plate is pivoted freely about a point A. So we are, we are given a 3, 4, 5 triangle here basically uh, which is pivoted at point A. So the uh, diagram should look something like this. Say so this point is the pivot point and here is A located, it is pivoted about point A. So say the, here is the support and here would be the vertex A. And then uh, we have this side that is uh, AB which is 3 cm, it's shorter side. Then we have the side that is uh, AC or CA which is uh, the longer side and then we have the side which has to be horizontal which is, which is given to us. So uh, this angle would be 90 here, this point would be B and uh, this point, this uh, distance is given to us as 3 cm AB and then this point is C and AC or CA is given to us as 4 cm and then BC is given to us as 5 cm and uh, we are asked what mass must be added to a vertex so that the plate can hang with the long edge horizontal. So we are asked what mass should be added to a vertex. So either with B or with C we are to hang a mass uh, so that uh, the long edge, this long edge, it becomes horizontal as I have already shown in the diagram. So first thing uh, we must understand is that this particular triangle will have somewhere its center of mass located and we should know that for a triangle, for a triangle the center of mass is always located at the point of intersection of medians that is called the centroid. So uh, here if we see, if we check for centroid, uh, say this is the median from uh, point A from the vertex joins the midpoint of say BC, this is uh, the median from say B, vertex B, it uh, joins the midpoint of AC and uh, this is the vertex from point C, it joins the midpoint of AB. Uh, the point of intersection of uh, the three vertices, that is this point here, say, uh, say this point is G, this represents the centroid here and here is the center of mass. The center of mass of uh, this triangle is located here. Clearly from the center of mass there will be a force, say that force is mg and that force is acting in the downward direction like this. So this mg force from the triangle will create a torque about this point uh, A, uh, about an axis passing through A. So let's consider that the horizontal axis is the x axis, the vertical axis is the y axis and the outward axis is the z axis here. And let's assume that the origin is located here at point B. So say here is the origin and say this axis here represents the x-axis and say uh, the vertical axis here, this axis represents the y-axis. So say this axis here, it represents the y-axis like this. So through point A, if we draw an outward axis, this axis would be the z-axis and about this axis, if we check for the torque of this force mg, uh, let's produce this mg. This is the line of action of mg. Uh, this is the perpendicular distance from A. This is the perpendicular distance, say from the axis of rotation of the line of action of this mg. So uh, clearly we see here that mg into this x1 will produce a torque that will try to uh, make this C point move in clockwise sense. So this C point should go down like this. We need to provide a counter torque so as to prevent the movement of C down. So that means uh, the first thing is that a mass should be uh, hung from point B and not from point C. C point is already having a tendency to go down here. So therefore the first point is that the mass should be hung at 
point or vertex B so that is one thing so let's say that here at point B we have hung a mass so that mass is uh, some mass say capital M and the force on this mass will be capital MG acting in the downward direction like this now uh, from here we need to understand that this uh, uh, triangle will stay uh, in this position that means this BC side the longer side the long edge will remain horizontal only if these two torques they will counterbalance each other now for the equilibrium or rather we should say the rotational equilibrium for the rotational equilibrium of the system the torque due to uh, this capital M produced by this capital M uh, the force due to capital M uh, should be equal to the torque which is produced by small m so that is the scenario here so if we equate these torques here uh, let's just let, let's just see uh, what these forces look like uh, capital mg we are already given uh, small mg here small m is already given to us as 540 gram okay so now we also need to draw this perpendicular line here because now this perpendicular line will help us calculate this distance x1 and also uh, this distance x2 x2 is perpendicular distance of the line of action of this mg which is actually the y-axis here from this axis of rotation so this perpendicular distance is also required so we need two perpendicular distances one is say this one that is x1 and one is this that is x2 so uh, first of all we also need to locate the center of mass of uh, this triangle so as to calculate this x1 how do we do that since we know that the center of mass is located at uh, the centroid the coordinates of the centroid can be calculated directly the coordinates of centroid which is also the center of mass of the triangle it can be calculated by applying the formula say xcm this equals xcm means from this point from this point that we've uh, called as origin here of the given uh, reference frame point b we have marked as origin so from this point xcm can be written as uh, say uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 total divided by 3 so uh, what we have done is that this x1 x2 and x3 these are the coordinates of the three vertices of this triangle uh, divided by 3 this will give us xcm uh, the x coordinate of the center of mass clearly x1 here is uh, that of b so if we say x1 is that of b so x1 comes out to be equal to 0 uh, for b and if we see for a the x coordinate uh, this x coordinate for a will come out to be this much from here to there here this x2 value this will be the x coordinate for uh, a and if we see this is a 3 4 5 triangle then this angle here comes out to be uh, this is opposite to 4 centimeter this will be 53 degree and this angle here is going to be 37 degree it's a 3 4 5 standard triangle so uh, the the angle opposite to smaller side is 37 to the larger side is 53 other than the hypotenuse that is uh, 5 centimeter so if we know this angle now here 53 we can clearly see this is hypotenuse it's a right angle triangle so in the uh, right angle triangle this is 3 centimeter so x2 here uh, which is actually the x coordinate for uh, uh, point a the vertex of this right angle triangle uh, this value will come out to be 3 cosine 53 so this value comes out to be 3 cosine 53 is 0. 0.6 so uh, this is uh, what we end up with x2 and then x3 if we see x3 would be the coordinate for c and uh, clearly we know the bc side is 5 centimeter so x3 comes out to be equal to 5 centimeter uh, so here if we go on for xcm we get the value of xcm as equal to uh, x1 is 0 x2 is 3 into point 
6 this comes out to be 1.8 so we can simply write down 1.8 plus 5 and this total divided by 3 so this comes out to be 6.8 divided by 3 this is uh, the x coordinate of the center of mass uh, clearly from here to this point uh, this distance this is uh, the location of the center of mass from B up till this distance we have calculated so this is the x coordinate of the center of mass uh, now from the x coordinate if we subtract this x2 from the x coordinate of the center of mass if we subtract this x2 we will end up getting uh, uh, the uh, what we call x1 value here so x1 clearly that this x1 is not the coordinate remember this these x1 x2 x3 these were coordinates this x1 and x2 let's just change the symbols then if there is would be any confusion so say this is uh, say l1 and this one here is l2 x1 x2 x3 these were actually the coordinates the x coordinates here so this is uh, this one was x1 for a we had x2 uh, the x the coordinate and for c we had the coordinate x coordinate as x3 now if we fill the value of uh, L1 here, L1 from the very figure we see this L1 will be from B up to this point, this distance, this total distance we have calculated as XCM, this much is actually XCM. So XCM comes out to be 6.8 by 3, so L1 will be 6.8 by 3 minus L2. So L2 value clearly, uh, this simply is again uh, 3 cosine 53 from the very figure. So this value comes out to be again 1.8. So if we subtract this, we get L1 value as uh, equal to uh, 6.8 by 3 minus 1.8. So this is what we end up getting. That is... Uh, the value l1 so if we solve for l1 we get 6.8 minus uh, 3 into 1.8 comes out to be 5.4 divided by 3 so l1 value comes out to be 1.4 by 3 so this is the l1 value in centimeters so now l2 we have already already calculated that is also in centimeters now for torque we need uh, either force into perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so for mg if we see the torque due to m say we are following this equation now the torque due to capital M will come out to be capital MG multiplied by L1 or rather L2 and torque due to small m will come out to be equal to small mg into L1 so this is uh, the equation that we end up getting capital M we need to determine G will get cancelled L2 value is given to us as 1.8 in centimeter let's keep it in centimeter because L1 is also in centimeter centimeter and centimeter these units will cancel uh, M is given to us as 514 grams uh, and L1 they have already calculated is 1.4 divided by 3 in centimeters so we solve for M here we get 540 multiplied by 1.4 divided by 3 divided by further 1.8 so uh, if we cancel this 3 with 540 we get 180 uh, and this 180 divided by 1.8 will give us uh, 100 100 multiplied by 1.4 will give us 140 gram so we have got this capital M to be 140 gram and it has to be hung from point B so the correct answer to this question is option C so 140 gram is to be hung at point B so that this uh, side BC it remains horizontal so that is uh, the correct answer to this question